Hello, this is Charting Man Dan of The Chart Guys, where we teach the little guy and girl how to utilize charts to manage their own trades and investments. What do I mean by the little guy and girl? Well, we just had two directives signed halting the implementation of a rule that requires financial advisors to act in the best interests of their client. Let that sink in a little bit. The big wigs on Wall Street can play with your retirement and hard-earned money without your best interests at heart. We currently have hundreds of members taking charge of their financial future, and we would love for you to come check out a free week with no credit card required to see if our services would be beneficial on your path to financial independence as well. What we offer, we have a separate course of over five hours in length on when to enter and exit positions. And in terms of what we do daily, we have nightly videos, key levels updated each morning before the bell, two and a half hours of live daily web webcam coverage in the morning and in the afternoon, and over seven hours of educational videos. All of these links can be found in the description of this video. Come check us out. Thanks for watching. Let's get on to the technical analysis. Hello everyone, checking in on gold miners and the dollar and today was the wildest day after doing gold every single day for over a year and a half. I can't remember a day like today. And that's just because we had the market at all time highs and we did have gold pulling back here on the hourly time frame after it hit higher highs. But to see a 25 to 30% move to the downside on these bear miners, we haven't seen that kind of 20% action unless the market and gold are going in the same direction. And that did not happen today. It was very, very clear that something very strange was going on. And we saw clues of that last week when we saw the first one was that tightening five minute pattern that saw a dump at the end of the day. And then we saw a couple other instances. And you can tell by there's a lot of frustrated traders out there that are saying, why is are we not correlating with gold anymore? Another reason could potentially be some bearish earnings reactions in these individual minor companies. But what occurred today was just an all-out rush to the exit, a bear attack, and the bulls just fleeing as we saw a huge move to the downside. And this gold move does not warrant that kind of bearish action. So to start the day, everything was normal. We had a nice bullish pennant to be watching, a clear bull break with three hours of upside following it. A nice bull volume. Look at the bear volume here. That is not scary bear volume, even though he pulled back fairly significantly. If you look at the daily time frame on gold, this is just a normal bearish reversal inverted hammer following a two-day breakout. As long as we pull back and maintain, I would say, a higher low compared to 1226, the bulls still remain in full control on this daily time frame. So this fear was absolutely not correlated to gold. Gold has no red flags for the bulls. We do have a bearish reversal candlestick and we are looking for normal healthy consolidation following this two-day breakout, but the volume favors the bulls, the price action, the trend, it all favors the bulls. So to see everybody flee from these bull miners like this is definitely notable and there is something going on behind the scenes here. So looking at the dollar, the dollar on the daily time frame, we still have our tightening pattern, 101.76, our low of 141. Lower high of 101.72, higher low of 166, and looking to continue to stay in this tightening range until we get a clear break if either by the end of this week or early next week we'll be looking for this pattern to break. There's still the potential of the bearish reversal head and shoulders, but we did see gold or we did see the dollar turn things around on the hourly time frame with the bulls showing up as we did see that gold weakness. But even then, this is not a strong move on the hourly time frame for the dollar in terms of turning things around. And again, certainly would not warrant what we saw on these bear miners. So looking in a little bit closer here, let's look at the five minute time frame on JNUG today at the end of the day. And after we saw this bearish action and hit a new low of the day, it was very clear that the bears were in control. So there were some people playing bearish and it was very easy to stay in these positions bearish because obviously all the momentum is going to the downside. But if you were not already in once we were hitting oversold RSI levels, it's really hard to jump into a bearish position. And I personally won't do it once that five minute RSI is under 30 and oversold. So personally, as I was not in any bearish positions, I was keeping an eye out for oversold bounces. And we did get this one. There was a nice oversold bounce, a little 4% move to the upside over a half an hour. And then we tried another oversold bounce here and this one did not work out. So we have to keep in mind like normal scenario where we would be looking for an oversold bounce because the five minute RSI is down in the teens and we had the hourly RSI. It was down in the mid twenties. So under normal conditions, that's when you start looking for an oversold bounce. But obviously today was not normal conditions and that bounce attempt failed. And that's why it's so important to have stop loss levels in place. You can't just jump into an oversold bounce because the RSI is oversold. You need to say, okay, if it hits this price, I'm going to risk this amount of money and I want to get stopped out because otherwise you get into a, a psychological 
mindset where you're saying, okay, well, I'm red now. We're oversold. We got to bounce. I'll hold it for a few days. And then it just drops and drops and drops. And maybe we will see, see some relief in the next few days getting back to a short-term bounce. But it's really that mindset that gets you locked into the trade. If you do not have your stop loss in place, it is very easy to freeze up and not do anything and just watch the losses get bigger and bigger and bigger. So here we have an oversold bounce playing out after hours. It is a very weak bounce attempt. If we look at the hourly time frame, it's a bear flag possibly. Look at the tons of bear volume. That is the number one thing standing out to me on this chart. And let's look at these daily charts for these miners. And it's very glaring. Look at that volume. This is the highest volume that we have seen in pretty much six weeks. And clearly it is all bearish volume, an all-out dump. The red flag, not only breaking the low of today was a red flag, breaking the low of last week, 2382. That was the low of consolidation. And now it's just another lower high and lower low with the bear still in control. We do still have a couple higher lows here, so it's not game over for the bulls. But obviously, it's a huge setback. We have 2278 as a key support, and then 2190 for GDX. The weekly time frame, a good target for the bulls to show up is going to be the weekly middle Bollinger Band. And the three times leveraged ETFs, JNUG and NUGT, have already fallen through their weekly middle Bollinger Band. So they have some catching up to do in terms of recovering that level by the end of this week. But GDX 2250. The gauge for me, this consolidation on the weekly time frame is still normal and healthy. And you'll remember here, we just went straight up for two months. So this is now the consolidation that we never saw on the way up. And in my opinion, this is a potential bull flag still of normal healthy consolidation. And my gauge for strength as to whether or not it is normal and healthy or not is going to be this middle Bollinger Band, 2250. You can tell we're going to have a big time volume week as we have yesterday or last week's 50% of last week's total volume and 20% of this week's trading. So we are absolutely going to see the highest volume week we've seen in a few weeks at the very least. All about 2250 on the weekly time frame for GDX. GDX XJ, highest volume we've seen in over three months. It was an absolute bear attack all out dump. And we are breaking a couple support levels. We had 3608. We got down to 3608. So that is a double low. And then I'm looking down to 3545. The middle Bollinger Band here on the weekly time frame, 3567, the must hold. In one trading day this week, we have more volume than four trading days last week. That shows you the huge volume. There were millions and millions of dollars being dumped and bears jumping all over this. So again, I pointed out the scenarios where we could see a, a break in the correlation with gold in the market. And there were instances today where we had... I was watching on the five minute time frame for JNUG. We were watching for another little oversold bounce attempt. At 2.30, gold hit the low of the day. At that point in time, it was the low of the day. And then it held that low of the day and traded straight across. No strong bounce attempt, but it did not set a new low of the day for the next half an hour. In that same time period, JNUG hit the low of the day and then hit a new low five more times while gold never broke that low of the day. And you might say, well, the market could have been consolidating. No, the market was at an all time high. So it had nothing to do with the market. It had nothing to do with gold weakness. And in my opinion, this is that example where we're seeing these ETFs, which certainly apply the laws of supply and demand, where we have, if we have a ton of shares, if we have People with a million shares dumping their JNUG, it's obviously going to drive the price into the, uh, the ground. And if we have bears jumping all over it, it's going to magnify it big time to the downside. And that's exactly what we saw. So again, this is the most memorable day in terms of miners and just a complete change in action and the normality of things the way we usually see them that I have seen in over a year and a half. So tomorrow we will see if we get some of this oversold bounce playing out. These hourly levels are extremely oversold. And we're going to have to see where they are when we open because they are recovering. We closed with the hourly RSI at 15, and right now we're up 7 RSI points. So it's down at 22 at this point. We need to hold the low of today, tomorrow. Otherwise, the bears will remain in control and we'll continue to see lower highs and lower lows on the daily time frame. So a potential target, if not in any position at this point, you're certainly relieved, even though you might have missed some upside 
big gains in the bear miners. You're not stuck in the bull miners, so that's a good thing. But if you're not in a position at this point and we see further downside tomorrow, I think it would be a, a nice entry target to be looking for a bullish bounce off these weekly middle Bollinger Bands. And I say if we see weakness tomorrow because that would show oversold conditions as we approach these key weekly supports. So we'll see how it plays out. Certainly going to be very interesting for the rest of the week. And one thing is for sure, let's look at some of these bear minor ETFs because they are seeing a big time bull breakout. So the first time we're over the middle Bollinger Band in two months and we are above the upper Bollinger Band breakout mode and for dust the weekly time frame, the most significant weekly candlestick we've seen in a while. Tons of work to do to change this trend. That's not going to happen anytime soon. So we can still be looking at this as an oversold bounce. The bulls have to get over 72.47. We need over a 100% move on dust to be changing this weekly downtrend. JDST, the same thing. This is a weak bounce attempt at this point. I mean, obviously we have a strong start to this week, but in terms of g gaining ground on where we came from at the end of 2016, we have to get up to 59.35. We need essentially a 200% move on JDST to break the weekly downtrend. So that's not going to happen anytime soon, but the daily chart's definitely seeing big time breakouts. JDST does not have the upper Bollinger Band as support, so we're not in breakout mode in that regard just yet, but we do know that the bulls have a lot of momentum going forward. So we'll check back in on it tomorrow. Use those stop losses because these RSI levels and this price action are doing very strange things. And the last thing we want to do is get stuck in positions that we don't want to be in. So I appreciate you watching and I will see you tomorrow.